Hey guys and welcome back to another Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a collectible system so you have to collect X amount of items in order to do something else. In this example I'm going to collect some items to be able to open a door and we have to collect all of them or as many as you want and you can do anything for example open a door, go to a new level, spawn something in or win the game. But again in this example it's going to be to open the door. So I'm hit play and show you what this is going to look like. So I can get in, walk over to this, press E to pick it up you see it says 1 out of 3 collected up at the top and it will also fade in and out. We'll go over 2 out of 3, we'll go over 3 out of 3. Now if we go over to this door, we can also now open this door and go through. So let me also show you beforehand, we can't actually open this door, so if I go over, we can't open the door until we've picked up all 3 of our collectibles or however many you have. And once we do pick them up, we can now open this door. So this is what we're going to make today, and again it's very easy to customise and change for what you want. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our game mode blueprints. And this is where we're going to be storing the integer to know how many collectibles we have or haven't got. We can do this in the character blueprint, but I'm just going to find it easier to do in the game mode blueprint instead. So what you can do is you can go to the world details here, see the game mode override. You want to use this game mode override here. If it's set as none, you're going to want to set it as something. And if you're using the third person blueprint, you should have the third person game mode. And we want to open that up, so you can just press the magnifying glass there to take you to it, and double click to open it up here. Again, I'm using the third person game mode blueprint, and I'm going to press open full blueprint editor here. What we want to do in here is we want to go off of event begin play, so when the game begins. So I'm going to right click and get event begin play there. Out of this, I'm going to get all actors of class, so we can get all of our collectibles the actor class being our collectibles BP, which we're going to create in a second. The out actors, we're going to get length, like so, which will return however many actors there are in the level, so how many collectibles we have placed down. And we're going to right click the return value, promote to variable, naming this collectibles left, setting that off of get all actors of class, and right click that return value and also promote it to variable, naming this one total collectibles. So we know how many we have in total and how many we have left because this left one we're going to be modifying to decrease it but this total will stay the same. So let's create the actor class there. So we're going to minimize this, go back to our folder for collect X to win or whatever you want. And we can right click, get a blueprint class, create an actor and I'm going to name this collectibles BP like so. Open it up straight away and go back to the game and blueprint, pressing this arrow here or just setting the actor class to be collectible BP there. So we compile, save, and now we should see it will print however many we have. And to test this out, what we do is just get a print string here, with the in string being the total collectibles there, like so. Then we're going to minimize this and just place in some random ones in here. So let's just place in four, for example. And if we hit play, it should say four up in the top left there, which works perfectly like so. So now let's start setting up our collectible BP. So we can double click to open it up, add a component, add a static mesh, like so. And I'm just going to simply make mine a cube. You can set it to whatever you want, but for me, I'm just going to have a cube. And I might minimize it a little bit, like so as well. And then we're also going to add another component of a box collision, like so. Making this just a bit bigger than our cube, like that. Compiling, and then go to the event graph and delete these three nodes here. What I'm going to do next is right click on the box collision, add event, add on component begin overlap, right click it again, add event, add on component end overlap. And the other actor we're going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character like so, and you want to do that on both begin and end overlap with the object being the other actor there, because we're checking to see if it's our character which is overlapping or not overlapping the box. And if we do overlap it, we want to enable or disable the input. So out of the begin overlap cast, we want to enable input, and out of the end overlap cast, we want to disable the input. So if we're close enough to the collectible, i.e. in a box collision, we're going to enable the input so we can pick it up. And if we're not close enough, so we're out of the box collision, we're going to disable the input so we can't pick it up. The target will be self, and the player controller will be get player controller there like so, for both the enable and disable the input. So now we can actually interact with this item if we're close enough. And when we interact with it, we want to pick it up. So what I'm going to do is up here, right click and get an E keyboard events or your interact action mapping if you have one 
And out of pressed, we're going to cast to our game mode blueprint, which for me is the third person game mode. So cast to third person game mode there with the object as get game mode. Very simple like so. And as third person game mode, what we want to do is get collectibles left, that integer we made earlier. And out of this, we're going to then get a decrement integer or an integer minus an integer, connecting that into the cast there. And then as third person game mode once again, we're going to now set collectibles left, that integer before, setting it after the decrement with the return value of the decrement going into there like so. So essentially all we're doing is we're just getting the amount of collectibles left and taking one away from it. Because when we pick up a collectible, we want to remove one so there's one less that we need to pick up, which this will then work perfectly for us. So we're setting the amount left minus one. And now what we want to do after this is also destroy the actor but also make it so we have the widget appear on screen telling us how many we've collected. So what I'm going to do is after the set, I'm going to create widget, like so. The class will set up in a second, and the return value will be add to viewport, like so. So it's going to add to the screen. And after this, we're going to destroy actor. So we've actually picked up the item. It's disappeared. It's been destroyed. So let's set up that widget now. So we can minimize this, right click on our content browser again, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint and I'm going to name this collectible widget like so opening that up straight away what I'm going to do is go back to my collectible BP and again press this arrow here just to put in the collectible widget in the create widget there I'm going to compile save and that is this now set up for our collectible item so we can go back to our widget and what I'm going to do is just simply get some text placing it in the middle there I'm going to anchor it to the top middle as well hitting size to content there. In the text, what I'm going to do is just write a reference so I can position it where I want. And I'm going to write x out of y or x slash y collected. So now I can move that back into the center where I want it to be, like so. Because what I want this to be is I want it to be how many we have out of how many there is collected. So if we have picked up one, it will say one out of four collected. If we picked one up and there's four in the level. And to actually make that work, all we can do is hit bind next to the text and create binding and we can just input that in here. So all the information we need will go into the return value here. And to get that information, we want to go back to the event graph of this collectible widget, remove event tick and event preconstruct and instead work off event construct because that's essentially like event begin play. And out of this, we want to cast to our game mode, which for me is the third person game mode, with the object once again being get game mode there like so. As third person game mode this time, what we're going to do is right click promoter variable, naming this game mode reference, just so we can access it whenever we want. And we compile, save, and go back to our get text function here for the binding. So what we're going to do is get the reference there, so get game mode reference, and we're going to then also out of the return value here, we're going to format text. And a format text just allows us to edit what the text is going to look like, and so format it. So I'm going to get one of these open brackets there. I'll put on the screen what I mean is the one with the kind of dip in it. I'm going to write in X and then get close brackets. Then put a slash, open brackets, Y, close brackets, space, collected. And if we hit enter, you can see we can now input X and Y. So what those brackets do is it allows us to put in information and put in data into this text for us to use. And so the X and Y obviously want to be our collectibles. So out of the game mode ref, what I want to do is get total collectibles with that one going into y like so. And you can see that's now made y an integer. Out of game mode ref again, I'm now going to get collectibles left. And to figure out how many we've picked up, that's very simple because collectibles left isn't how many we've picked up, it's how many are left. So what we can do is out of total collectibles, we can get an integer minus an integer, and we're gonna minus the collectibles left, connecting that into x there. So to figure out how many we've picked up, we're just going to get the total collectibles minus the collectibles left, inputting that in there. So now what's going to happen is when we pick one up, it will tell us how many we've picked up out of how many there were originally, which is going to work perfectly for us. And we can compile and save that like so. So now that text is going to work perfectly. But what I also want to do is I want to make it so it fades on and off the screen so it looks a bit better. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the designer, select my text, and also make sure I have the animations and timeline sections on screen. If you don't have them, you can go to window up at the top 
and make sure you hit timeline and animations there. Then we're going to hit a plus animation, naming this fade, select that animation, add a track, adding the text, so the text block we have there. So if you've named it something different, it will be whatever you've named it. Then we can add a track on that text, and I'm going to add color and opacity because I want to fade it in, so I want to change the opacity. Opening that up, and I'm also just going to drag over the timeline here, and I'm going to make it last about 0.25 seconds. So I've dragged it all the way out to 0.25. Then leaving the timeline at the start, I'm going to set the A or the alpha or the opacity to zero. And then you can see it's fully transparent, so it isn't there. If I move the timeline all the way to the end, so 0.25, and change that to one, you can see it. So if we play this, you see it's fading in. And if we reverse it, you see it's fading out. So that's going to work perfectly for us. So we can compile and save that. And now we just need to play this animation for fading in and out. So go back to the graph and go to the event graph. And we're going to again go off of event construct so when it appears on screen. And what we're going to do is after the set game mode ref here, we want to play the animation. So we can drag in fade there or whatever you name the animation from the left over here. And out of this, just get play animation very simply like so. And you don't need to do anything else with that. It's incredibly simple. Then we're going to hold down D and left click to get a delay. And the duration of this, I'm going to set to three seconds, but this is how long you want it to be on screen for. So I want it to be on screen for three seconds. Again, set this to whatever you like. And now the completed of that delay, we're going to again play animation with the in animation once again being that fade animation we made earlier, connecting into in animation there. And the play mode this time isn't going to be forward, it's going to be reverse. Because if this fade fades in, reversing it will fade out. Very simple like so. After this, I'm going to hold down D, left click to get another delay with the duration of this being 0.3 because the animation length for me is 0.25 so 0.3 will make sure this is fired off after the animation but again make sure you set that accordingly to how long your animation is then the completed I'm just going to get remove from parent like so because what's going to happen is it's going to fade it out and then I'm also going to take it off screen but because it's faded out we won't notice it disappearing and that will work perfectly like so so we compile and save and now what we've done is when we pick up a collectible, it's going to appear on screen to show us how many we've collected out of how many there is. And when it appears on screen, it's going to fade in and fade out, which will work perfectly like so. So the final step is to make sure that when we've collected all the collectibles we want, we can do what we want as well. And this example is going to be opening a door. But again, you can do this for whatever you want. And if you want more specific help for different things, let me know in the comments down below. So I've already got the main part of my door blueprint set up, but I do have a lot of videos going over how to create doors. And again, I can help further in the comments or on Discord if you like. So I'm gonna minimize this and open up my door exit BP here. And as you can see, all I've got is pretty much how to open the door. So again, I'm gonna enable and disable the input. And then this timeline here is actually gonna open and close the door. So what I'm gonna do is off of my E or interact button again here, I'm going to cast to the game mode blueprint. So cast to third person game mode, or whatever you have it named as. Object, once again, being get game mode. And as third person game mode, what we want to do is we want to see if we've collected all of the collectibles. So to do that, we can get collectibles left, like so. And after this, we can get an equal equal integer, making sure it's equal to zero, because if there are no collectibles left, then we've collected them all. And we can hold down B and left click to get a branch, connecting the condition into there, the input into the third person game mode and true into play of our timeline to open the door. Because obviously if this is true, so there are zero collectibles left, then we've picked them all up and we want to be able to open the door. And false will go into nothing or what you can do is go into another create widget just to appear on screen to say you need to collect all the collectibles or something along those lines. And again, that's very simple. False will just go into create widget and add to viewport perfectly like so. So this should now work perfectly for us. Because again, what this is going to do is when we want to try and open the door, it's going to check to make sure that we have collected all of the collectibles so there are none left, which will work perfectly for us like so. So I compile, save, minimize, and hit play to test this out. So again, I've already got my door in there and I've already placed in however many collectibles I want. Let's say five instead. So what I'm going to do is hit play, collect this one, and it says at the top, one out of five collected. And it should fade out as well, perfectly like so. Now two three, four out of five collected, and that will fade off screen like that. If I try to open the door, it won't work because we've only collected four out of five. So if I now collect the fifth one as well, 
we can see that the door should now open perfectly like so. So this works perfectly and I think that'll be it for this video is so we've done everything we want to do. We've created a collectible system in which we have to collect all of the collectibles placed in the map in order to do something else, in this example opening a door. And when we collect them they disappear and it comes up at the top of our screen saying how many we have collected and it has a nice fade in and out transition like so. And again we can only interact with the door or do whatever we want once we've collected all of them. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.